Millions of tiny creatures are rushing across scorching hot sand. They're not gasping for air, not thrashing in agony. They're moving in perfect formation like an army on the march. This isn't footage from Resident Evil and it's not AI generated. This is real video from Pakistan that completely broke the brains of thousands of internet users. Fish that walked onto dry land? Has evolution lost its mind? Or is this a sign of the apocalypse? Today you'll learn the truth how these fish's internal GPS works, why water makes them commit fatal errors, and how local people have been exploiting this glitch in nature for centuries to catch fish with their bare hands. The heroes of this madness are Puntius, commonly known as barbs. If you've ever had a fish tank, you might recognize them. These are Puntius, small freshwater fish from the carp family. In a home aquarium, they're cute, zippy little things with silver or golden scales that are a joy to watch. But in the wild rivers of South Asia, in Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, they're a true biological force. What's their main secret? Their unbelievable numbers. Barbs are fish with an extremely rigid schooling hierarchy. A lone barb in the wild is doomed, so they gather into massive schools. But this isn't just a school. It's a genuine superorganism. When thousands of them come together, they start moving in absolute synchrony. If one fish turns, they all turn. It looks mesmerizing underwater. But when this collective mind finds itself in an extreme situation, chaos breaks out. They don't need much food. They're incredibly hardy, and they reproduce at an insane rate, filling any available body of water. It's precisely this mass behavior that creates that terrifying effect in the videos. It looks like the road is flowing not with water, but with liquid silver. But what drove them onto the sand? To understand why they're marching, we need to look inside the fish itself. Humans have five senses, barbs have a sixth, and in moments like these, it completely overrides their survival instinct. It's called the lateral line. Look closely at any fish. Along its side runs a thin stripe. That's not just a pattern. It's an exposed nerve, a sophisticated natural radar that detects the slightest pressure changes in water. Thanks to this organ, the fish can hear the current. Even in total darkness, in murky sludge, it knows exactly where the water is flowing from and how fast. In science, this phenomenon is called rheotaxis. Most river fish have positive rheotaxis. This means their brains are literally hardwired with the command, always face upstream. It's basic survival physics. If you're tail first in a current, water floods your gills and you can't breathe. If you're sideways, you get swept away. The only way to stay in control is to face the flow head on. In a river, this saves lives, but on asphalt, this instinct becomes a self-destruct program. Let's go back to that Pakistani road. What are we actually seeing? After a heavy rain, the sand is barely damp. The layer of moisture might be negligible, invisible to the eye. To us, it's just sand, dry sand. But to the hypersensitive lateral line of a barb, it's a full-fledged current. The fish detect the movement of water trickling down the sloped road. Their instinct screams, swim upstream. Up there is the big water. Up there is safety, and they start furiously working their fins, crawling on their bellies, pushing uphill. Here lies the main perception error. Viewers often think the fish are walking on dry ground. No, barbs are not amphibians. They cannot breathe air. If you look closely at the high-quality footage, you'll see they're always in an ultra-thin film of water. As long as their gills are at least partially bathed in water, the barb stays alive and keeps fighting. The moment the water dries up, the march ends. They're not taking a stroll. They're swimming in an extremely shallow pool. This isn't an evolutionary miracle. It's a desperate fight for life based on a navigation failure. Many will say, but I've definitely seen fish that walk on land. And you'd be right. To understand just how primitive barbs are in this regard, let's compare them to true survival monsters. In that same part of Asia lives the climbing perch. Now that's a real infantryman of the fish world. It has a special labyrinth organ that allows it to absorb oxygen directly from the air. A climbing perch can literally crawl out of a dried up pond, take a deep breath, and drag itself hundreds of feet across dry, dusty ground to a new puddle, gripping the soil with its rigid gill covers. Or think of mud skippers, which spend half their lives on land, sitting on mangrove roots.
Compared to them, the barb is just an amateur. It has no lungs, no powerful leg-like fins. All it has is an insane drive toward current and sheer numbers. If the climbing perch is a lone special op soldier, then barbs are infantry that wins by numbers but dies by the thousands. So why have these videos become so common right now? Simple, the climate is changing. In Pakistan, the monsoon season has intensified. Floods have become more destructive. Sometimes most of the lowland valleys end up underwater and water systems literally merge into one. Fish lose their bearings, end up in canals, fields, and even on roads. When the water recedes, it flows down the highways and the fish, following their hardwired rule of swim upstream, end up on asphalt. For nature, it's a tragedy. For locals, it's an opportunity. People living in river deltas and floodplains noticed this behavior long ago. They learned to exploit it. They dig small channels, redirecting runoff water toward traps made of bamboo or baskets. The fish swim right in, thinking they're swimming to safety. During floods, when fields are destroyed and food is scarce, these mass fish migrations help thousands of people survive. So, the next time you see a video like this, don't rush to believe in the supernatural. This isn't the apocalypse. It's a collision between ancient instinct and civilization. Barbs don't know what a road is. They're just following the water. And in that simple movement, there's something hauntingly right. Nature doesn't make mistakes. Sometimes it just doesn't account for a highway being in its path. See you soon.